Black tea that's been grown and processed in Japan is called wakocha. It's drawing the attention of tea drinkers around the world. <laughs> to discover its secrets, Peter Barakan heads to tea farms in southwest Japan to meet people who make this kind of tea. Mmm, it is, it's very tasty. Hello and welcome to Japanology Plus. I'm Peter Barakan. I'm standing in a tea field. Now, when you say tea in Japan, you're automatically going to think of green tea, whether it's the regular green tea that everybody drinks every day or the strong powdered green tea called matcha, which is associated with the tea ceremony. Either way, overwhelmingly, Japanese people drink green tea. However, both green tea and black tea, or what I call English tea, both come from the same plant. And in fact, these plants here are going to be used for black tea, which is called kocha in Japanese. Now, black tea made in Japan, called wakocha, has recently been acquiring something of an international reputation. And in 2022, it won the top prize at an international competition in London. On today's program, we'll see how it's made and what makes it so special. Mr. Barakan. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. I'm Okamoto Hiroshi. This is our main guest. Okamoto Hiroshi is one of Japan's leading wakocha experts. His shop in Saga Prefecture specializes in Japanese black tea. The teas he sells are carefully selected and come from all over the country. Okamoto teaches visitors how to brew and enjoy each variety. I've been drinking tea all of my life, and in fact I still do drink tea every day, but almost always it's tea bags that I buy in England. I have drunk black tea that's made in Japan, but not very often. Perhaps you could explain how it's different. Well, wakocha does refer to black tea that's made in Japan. But that's not the whole story. It has a complicated background, with many elements. I think it's best you just drink it and experience it yourself. Ashikita in Kumamoto Prefecture. On this small hillside farm, tea is grown without the use of pesticides or chemical fertilizers. It's made by Kajihara Toshihiro, a third-generation tea farmer. He produces a world-class black tea. An impression on the panel of 12 expert judges. I think the wakocha had um, such an impact for the judges particularly, and it wasn't just a Japanese black tea. That was completely, almost like a completely new concept because they are just so unique. And um, it's not really categorized in any of other black tea, which was kind of standardized before. Kajihara's Benihuki was completely um, blown out all of the judge's mind. So now let's visit Kajihara's home where Peter will try the award-winning tea. Oh, you've got all kinds of diplomas and things. They're actually certificates from various competitions. Hmm. Here's the trophy I won in 2022 at the Leafy's in London. Oh, congratulations. Wow. I can't wait to try it. Let's brew some Benifuki the variety that won Best in Show. OK, you decant it. Oh, it looks... it's a very nice colour. A deep red. OK. Thank you. Mm. 
It is, it's very tasty. Um, there's a slight bitterness to it, but only very little. There's a kind of depth to it too. Normally I drink my tea with milk, but this is probably better as it is, I would imagine. Yes, it's best to drink it straight. Oh. Mm. Definitely a better class of tea. For comparison, Peter will try a tea bag from a major British company. Ah, oh, there's a slightly harsher taste, I suppose. This would probably be better with milk. How's the aroma? This is kind of a, a bitterer feeling and... How about the Benifuki? This one has more aroma, really. I'm so used to drinking this kind of tea that it, it feels quite, quite natural. But when you compare the two, this is definitely uh, a superior tea. You, you can tell. People might say, so that kind of feel produces this kind of taste. This is what Benifuki is like, or this is the Kajihara flavour. That really is almost like wine, isn't it? That's a common comparison. So you hear words like terroir, for example. OK. Mm. So this grower has, let's see, four different fields. So each different field is going to have a different taste. Strictly speaking, yes. Other factors include the climate and exactly when you picked the leaves. Oh. We can only produce a small amount of each variety, but we have loyal customers who look forward to and wait patiently for our teas. What kind of different types do you have? Well, shall we brew some more tea for you to try? Oh, <laughs> OK, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Peter will try three of Kajihara's most popular varieties. First, Zairai, a native tea that has grown wild here for centuries. Here goes with the Zairai. <laughs> Oh, that's quite a mild taste, mm, but flavorful. Mm. And that's been around for a long time. So this would have been used to make green tea. It actually still is. Mm. This is our most popular tea. Oh. It's easy to drink oh. and has a great aroma. Mm. Next, try this one. It's called Caution. Okay. This is very easy to drink as well. Um, it's a bit different. I'm trying to think how. Um, a touch more bitterness to this, perhaps. Both caution and zydai were originally used to make green tea, so they're not too astringent or bitter. But the zydai is more delicate. Oh, that's true. Mm. Lastly, we go back to the award-winning tea, Benifuki. OK. Uh, Let me just try this one again. Mm. This does have more punch to it, doesn't it? <laughs> and yours was chosen as number one out of 300 different ones. That's right. That's, that really is impressive. <laughs> Thank you very much. It is both refined and pungent. It strikes a wonderful balance, which is why it was rated so highly. If pungency were the only criterion, other teas would surpass it. Oh, oh. Yeah, it's <clears throat> obviously, it's got to be a good balance, hasn't it? So, Kajihara-san, how long have you been making this kind of tea? Did you start off with green tea? I did. I began producing black tea as well around 13 years ago. Was there a special reason why you switched? 
Green tea sales were dwindling. Really? <laughs> I mean, this is the country of green tea, isn't it? Nevertheless, consumption has declined. Oh. Lots of other drinks have appeared on the market and become popular. So it must have been a bit of a gamble, though, to switch to black tea. And how successful has the, the, the black tea been? Thankfully, demand is higher than supply. Oh. Mass production isn't possible. It's grown on a rocky slope, in rough terrain. But I believe that makes it easier to showcase the individual characteristics of each tea. I'm not aiming for particular flavours. I'm more interested in seeing what emerges naturally. Mm -hmm. Most varieties of tea come from the same tea plant, Camellia sinensis. It originated in southwest China, then spread throughout the world. Different cultures developed their own takes on tea. In Japan, green tea is especially popular. To make it, freshly picked tea leaves are heated. This prevents oxidation. For black tea, meanwhile, the leaves must be allowed to oxidize. Black tea is enjoyed throughout Asia. In Turkey, it's brewed to be full body and served with lots of sugar. Indian chai is brewed with milk and spices. Malaysians enjoy te tarik which features condensed milk. The resulting drink is frothy and sweet. Green tea arrived in Europe during the 17th century. But it was black tea that became the preferred choice. It was particularly popular among the British aristocracy. And in due course, tea drinking spread to the general public. People began to enjoy afternoon tea, which also features sandwiches and scones. In the UK, people commonly add milk and sugar to their black tea. Next stop, Minami Kyushu, known for its green tea. Oh, well, I was not <laughs> expecting to see one of those. A London bus, the number 27 to Richmond. Well, the question is, what is a London bus doing in the southern part of Kyushu? To answer that question, let me introduce you to the proprietor. Here she is, Tanaka-san. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Hello, and thank you for coming. This is Tanaka Kyoko. She moved here from Osaka in 1967 after getting married. Tanaka is a certified tea instructor and an aficionado of British culture. She opened this combined museum and tea room as a place to share her enjoyment of black tea. It draws many visitors. In the year 2000, she acquired her own field and despite a lack of experience, began growing tea. The resulting products drew international acclaim and won major awards. Tanaka-san is a true Anglophile and she even established a museum. Would you show us around? Of course. The bus is part of Tanaka's collection. Let's see what's in the building. Here are the exhibits. 
This is the Anglo Satsuma Museum. It documents over 160 years of interactions involving the UK and this region in southwest Japan, formerly known as Satsuma. There's a special focus on tea, and a number of significant items are displayed. This is about the origin of black tea production in Japan. It was the 19th century, and in those days, tea was exclusively for export. That's what is shown here. Back then, most Japanese people hadn't even heard of black tea. They would have asked, how is that different from green tea? But Japan was just starting to build relationships with other countries. It was searching for ways to generate an income through international trade. Hmm. Japan started making black tea as a commodity that could be exported and sold. Production really took off. Oh, OK. So it was a diplomatic tool. Yes, but that didn't last forever. Trade liberalization in 1971 changed everything. Black tea was no longer a moneymaker, so for economic reasons, the tea industry decided to shift its focus to green tea production. Until that point, black tea was produced for export. It was grown in large fields and sold to other countries around the world. It was intended to appeal to foreign consumers and was mass-produced. But trade liberalization brought that to an end. So farmers started making a product that suited the Japanese market. And that trend has continued to the present day. The exhibition is not the only attraction. Visitors can also get a first-hand experience of picking and processing black tea. Peter's going to give it a go. This is my tea field. Very nice. I've, I've never picked tea before, so you're going to have to tell me how it's done. It's fun. There's a bud here. Uh-huh. One bud with one, two, three leaves. That's about right. You just pull it off. Oh. All right. So, here? Yes. OK, good. This. All right. Tanaka grows tea without using any pesticides or chemical fertilizers. So we go here, actually. It's there we go. Don't use too much force. Crushing it will spoil the flavor. In general, we want one bud and three leaves. But the situation changes somewhat every day. Picking by hand allows you to fine tune. It's a form of craftsmanship. That's the advantage of hand picking. The leaves are left to dry for half a day or a day, then rolled. The way they are rolled greatly affects the final taste. We're going to demonstrate how rolling technique affects flavor. So go ahead, but be gentle. OK. Tanaka, meanwhile, is being more forceful. Like this? Very good. I can tell the tea is happy. <laughs> For a more pungent taste, you apply more pressure. For a delicate taste, you roll the leaves much more gently. It's not like bread, which reacts to yeast. We oxidize the leaves. In order to do that, we need to damage them a little bit. It's like a cut apple turning brown. Okay, it's as simple as that. Hi. The rolled leaves are placed in a warm, humid environment and left to oxidize for around an hour. This is different from green tea, which is not oxidized at all. At the right moment, the leaves are heated 
This halts the oxidation process. The final step is to dry them for half an hour. OK, they should be about ready. First, these leaves. Oh, that's looking quite different now, isn't it? Yeah. Now these bigger leaves. Mm. Oh, that's really starting to look like tea now, isn't it? Mm. This one was gently rolled. You can still see the shape of the buds. This was firmly rolled. The leaves are entwined. In English, you refer to this as black tea. It is said that the name comes from this dark colour that the leaves take on once they've been dried. That's one theory, at least. Could be. Right, I, you know, I never thought about that. Yeah, because un unless you compare it with green tea, you just take it for granted that it's tea. <laughs> Wakocha is difficult to mass produce, but a new business is helping farmers to increase their sales. It was created by Nikishi Jiro, a tea instructor. He travels throughout the country, promoting Wakocha and teaching about its history. In 2021, Negishi established a Wakocha delivery service and sought out subscribers. Kubo Masayuki is his business partner. They carefully select teas from across the country. Ah, wonderful. They're all good. Once every two months, they send each subscriber packs of rare, high-quality black tea. The delivery includes printed information about each tea farm and farmer. It also explains the best way to brew the different varieties. It's not easy to meet farmers face to face, so we try to inform subscribers about new developments, available varieties, and so on. Each farmer has their own story, varieties of tea, and production methods. We think that sharing this with our customers tends to encourage them to try new teas. That's my main goal. Hello! Homma Asami is a subscriber for this Wakocha delivery service. Interesting. <laughs> Smells good. <laughs> A pretty orange colour. I love tea, so I do search for different varieties. But it can be very difficult to find what I'm looking for. This service gives me more chances to discover new teas. It's wonderful. <laughs> I've boiled some water. So, let's get brewing. OK, let's try them out. The firmly rolled tea is turning a deep reddish colour. Whereas the gently rolled tea... Pale yellow colour, yeah. It is pale, yes. That's the firmly rolled tea. And here's the gently rolled tea. 
it's much lighter. Oh, it's a very pale colour, yeah. But they're both identical leaves from the same plant. Yes. How you roll it makes this much difference. OK, this one first. Mm. That's a very light paste, yeah. That's... Although it's black tea, the taste is a little bit close to green tea. It has a freshness to it. Mm. And this one too, actually. It's, it's a slightly more robust uh, flavour to it. But it's, it's still, you, you can tell it's, it's Japanese tea. Mm. Oh, interesting. I guess what I liked was the idea that it's very local. Uh -huh. um, these days, everything, you, you, you hear nothing but globalization all the time. And the idea that something can be ex extremely local just kind of appeals to me. Mm. Especially, I mean, you're growing it organically, you don't use any uh, chemical fertilizers or anything. And it's just a very small amount. You're not doing it to make millions. Mm. Um, and that just seems a pleasant alternative to me, anyway. Satsuma nouveau. <laughs> <laughs>